Hey guys, I know we didn't have a staff meeting this week, so I thought I'd figure out a way to shit you out what I know and uh, what's been going on. So I figured this was an easy way. I'll take any feedback you've got and, um, you know, we'll see if this kind of thing works when we can't get together face to face via Meet or Zoom or something like that. So it's kind of an interesting week because the, the non-news is really the news. So I can't believe it, but we went through Indigenous Peoples Day and we still don't have a CARES package, which means that the airlines and the concessionaires, the airports all had to come up with plans to actually furlough people. They've been complaining about it for months, but now we're seeing tens of thousands of furloughs take place. The latest uh, um, demise was at Boeing. Uh, they shut down their Boeing Next program, which is what they were used to focus on urban air mobility. So a number of top-notch talent from engineers to other uh, industrial leaders um, found out on Friday. Probably knew it was coming because the head of Boeing Next wound up at Iris Automation, a drone uh, uh, detect and avoid company. So they announced him 24 hours after Boeing Next shut down. So other news is uh, pretty cool stuff. Uh, the FAA finally announced that they added another almost 500 airports uh, to the system for Lance. Uh, all the federal contract tower airports and some uh, military bases and some other airports all got included. And I think the number's up now north of 700 airports that are actually part of the Lance program. So uh, that's the access to airspace. If you're a drone operator, you either have to notify or you have to get approval if you're going to uh, a, basically a towered airport uh, anywhere around the country. So basically you can't fly in New Jersey unless you get, get an approval through a land system. So that's kind of the importance of the whole thing. Um, I'm still pretty bullish about air travel. Uh, it's been, uh, you know, the theory is always that, that travel now is lackluster from Labor Day to the Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays. And so that's a flat line, but it hasn't really happened that way. So there was some expectation that would be. But um, TSA screened over 900,000 people three times last week. And even this week, it's uh, up two times. And so the last time that happened was uh, actually Labor Day weekend, and the time before that was St. Patrick's Day. So, I mean, it's showing that the curve is, you know, still increasing, um, even though this is sort of a flat time to travel anyway. Um, the other reasons to stay bullish are United is continuing to rebuild its domestic network as well as resuming service to over 30 international destinations. And I think uh, American just notified uh, another um, international set today. Um, and uh, we may not be like in China recently, but United starting four flights to China out of San Francisco to Shanghai uh, starting in November. So that's, that's a good reason to stay, stay uh, bullish on, on progress. So logistics, kind of part of the core of the travel industry. Um, and airlines have been shifting to cargo, so maybe that center seat is going to be a cargo place. But um, trivia question, if we get one coronavirus vaccine to every person on the planet, how many 747s does that take? Uh, the number is 8,000. Problem is there's only a, there's less than a thousand Boeing 747s in service. So logistics nightmare. So I'm figuring that if we come up with a program to put like a college dorm refrigerator in that middle seat, we can ensure social distancing as well as being able to take vaccines around the country and around the world. Um, problem is with most vaccines that are in development now, they have to be at incredibly cold temperatures, so it's a logistics nightmare. Lufthansa and UPS are working on making vaccine farms and then trying to uh, uh, coordinate large aircraft nearby so that they can have this hub and spoke model to be able to move stuff around at um, you know super cold temperatures. And there's still a 20% spoilage rate. So vaccines have high hopes, but the logistics model is going to be just as hard as coming up with a vaccine. So what's going on in the calendar? Um, RTCA is holding a webinar this week uh, with Gene Haven from Collins Aerospace, part of the Raytheon company, uh, leading a panel of, uh, of, of experts. One of them is Naveen Rao. He used to work for the House Transportation Committee. He now works for Atlas Airlines, which should be a pretty good panel. Um, and they're going to have a, a tech talk leading into that by uh, a comments by Paul Rinaldi on COVID-19 impact. So it should be pretty interesting. Um, 
Then there's the Drone Advisory Committee on Friday, so that that should be kind of interesting. They're supposed to there are they had an opening, so there was a there's an expectation that maybe they're going to uh, announce who some more panel members are. Um, uh, boom, 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 uh, boom, aerospace. Boom, 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 boom. Song is a f- song from like uh, 1979, made number one in the UK. It's also part of the song from Government Mule that's the lead-in song for um, NCIS New Orleans. So anyway, that's a a full of trivia this week. Um, The XB1, they did a rollout of their uh, model. It's like one-third model uh, for a supersonic flight. The real deal will be 55 passengers and travel it over Mach 2. Uh, The model's supposed to, you know, kind of demonstrate the entire set of technology. They're using subsonic engines and in a new way so they don't have to create a new engine they just are trying to change the airflow into the engine which makes supersonic flight possible Um, so using standard stuff going a lot faster that could open up that whole supersonic thing because you don't have to be you know super rich dump all kinds of like dod money in to go fast you could actually get there a different way by using sort of off the shelf pratt and whitney or rolls royce engines so let me know what you think Give me some feedback. It's all good, and uh, have a great week.